Um, yesterday you heard President Trump speak, give, a, I guess, an endorsement to red flag gun laws. What do you think about that? Well, look, the we'll tragedy, I'm sorry, the tragedy we just had, uh, again, reminds us that, you know, we don't have this solved. Neither side has offered up a solution to that. This is a tragedy that has got to be um, stopped. We've got to make sure that we get together and stop the partisanship around this. Um, you know, I've been involved in this now since I've been up there. We put bills in that uh, will help keep uh, guns out of the hands of criminals. Uh, we supported that bump stock decision that was made by the president earlier. And these things that um, we just need to make sure that the Second Amendment is protected, but that uh, the people who shouldn't have guns don't get them. I mean, it's pretty simple. Are you open to exploring that, the idea of red flag laws? Well, I'm going to look at that. I have not looked at that yet, but I've, I'm looking at what we've got in legislation now that we've put in, and I fully support that. Um, I, listen, I believe in the Second Amendment, like I just said, but I also believe in the First Amendment. And so um, these are individual, isolated events with multi-victims. They're tragedies. Um, we've got a drug war going on in the United States, actually, that produces more murders, and that's the second part of this big equation that we've got to get serious about. So it's a, it's a very comprehensive uh, question. What's wrong with the background check bill that the House passed? Well, there are parts of it that I, I disagree with, but I think for the most part, uh, having a more stringent background check is fine. Um, I've actually, we've got a bill that does that. Uh, and basically it goes to one step further to make sure that we know the background a little more deeply uh, than we do today in terms of what their uh, legal history has been. Um, that's pretty much it. When we see a growing number of these uh, shootings that are happening more often, maybe as we get into the background of the shooters, some of their beliefs uh, rooted in hatred, oftentimes bigotry, you know, a lot of folks are trying to pin the, the normalization of that type of of thought and rhetoric coming from the White House. You think the president should tone it down? Well, that's just ridiculous. I mean, to even, even come up with that comment, I'm offended by that, and I, and I think it's absolutely disservice to the American people because these things were going on long before him. Look, this is a time to talk about solutions, not responsibility. I mean, both sides, <laughs> both political parties are responsible for this. Career politicians haven't moved on this for decades, and yet we still have these events. Quite frankly, um, in, a, in a free democracy like we have today, um, you run the risk of having things like this. That's why you have legislators to try to deal with it in a bipartisan way. The thing that's been missing in this issue is really both sides trying to work on it in a bipartisan manner. That's why I'm encouraged by some of these things that we're actually talking about going further. When the president unilaterally did away with the bump stock, that created a lot of controversy. Um, so um, I still think there's a lot of work to do here. But I tell you what, the other thing that's at issue here, and I come back to it, if you want to really talk about numbers, let's talk about what's causing all the murders behind the drug trade in America. What are we going to do to do that? I mean, we're not only destroying the kids and the families who get caught in the drug um, uh, business themselves, but it's all the stuff that goes on around that. I went down to the border a couple months ago, and I saw the size of the drug trade coming in right now and how it has increased over the last four or five years. It's a very serious part. It's much bigger than actually an aggregate in terms of total people who have been murder in the United States, unfortunately. The president kind of indicated yesterday that maybe he would tie immigration to expanding background checks on guns. Does that make sense? Look, I'm focused on immigration. We've got a bill that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. My contribution to that is we've now stopped talking about comprehensive immigration solutions and start talking about how to fix each individual part. There are four major areas of the immigration problem. There's the illegal problem where, and again, 40, 45 percent of the people here illegally came in legally. We need to fix that. <laughs> the third part is um, you've got the DACA situation. The second part is you've got temporary work visas. And then you've got the big problem. That's the legal immigration. We get about 1.1 million legal um, green cards a year that lead to citizenship. And we're offering up a bill that will change how we do that, that will actually produce more workers and protect American workers at the same time. I guess what I'm asking is, does it make sense to handle the gun issue by tying it to, to immigration? Well, I haven't seen any law come across my desk or anything else like that, and we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that we do just after every one of these. But the point is, in two weeks, you guys will be talking about something else, and it won't be highlighting this, and we're all guilty of that. I am, you are, we all are. My point in there to the Kiwanis Club is that, look, Let's use this incident and not let that happen this time. Let's move both of us, put pressure on both parties to move to a bipartisan solution, do what we can to actually prevent these things from happening. This type of hatred has no place in America, and we all need to stand up and just bow up against that.